Hello everyone, it's the weekend. Welcome again to Massey United Insurance's Line and Length. It's a cricket programme where we look at the sport, not only in the region, but internationally as well. I'm Barry Wilkinson. With me is Andrew Seeley. And this week we're coming to you from the Desmond Haynes Oval, um, of course, formerly known as the Carlton Cricket Club, where the Barbados Pride team are getting ready for the upcoming professional cricket league season. It's certainly, Barry, and it's 2015 and Barbados is getting ready and we're going to talk to some big people in Barbados cricket. Some big people in Barbados cricket indeed. Hendy Wallace is the chairman of the Barbados Pride cricket team. He's going to tell us about a cricketer that he won't mind having back in his armory. In addition, we're going to hear from the uh, director of coaching uh, for that Barbados Pride team and some players. And then we're going to look at what's happening with South Africa and India in a series that's locked one all in their ODI competition. Before we get into the program, though, it's been well mooted that the uh, first class professional cricket league, which will start in November, the fixtures are not officially out yet. But we have a look at the prelim preliminary uh, fixtures and the Barbados Pride team seem to have a couple of matches at home. But the defending champions, we can't forget them, the Ghana side, uh, they also have some games home and they're playing Barbados in Ghana. Well, that's certainly a big game, Barbados versus Ghana, whether it's in Ghana or in Barbados, it'll be a big game. But the fact that Barbados has two games at home to start at Kensington Oval certainly boots well for the Barbados team. Indeed it does. So when we come back, we're going to talk to Henry Wallace, hear who he wouldn't mind having back in his squad, and also we're going to hear a bit later on from some other important people. You're watching Mass United Insurance's Line and Length. Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance. We're back on Mass United Insurance's line and length. With me is Hendy Wallace. He's the chairman of selectors for the Barbados Pride team as we look forward in a couple of weeks' time to the second time around of the Professional Cricket League. Hendy, first of all, the Barbados team, how are they looking for the PCL start? Well, by the preparation has gone quite well and we have had two practice matches, but prior to that, we had a whole series of medical testing, eye testing, fitness testing, which would have started from sometime in July. So the, the contracted players have certainly been at it for quite some time and it has really gone very well. Since then we've had the trial matches, which was ideally for players who were returning from the UK or their respective professional contracts who were contracted players. Some players of interest, because we also like to use this as part of our developmental program. Uh, since this panel has taken on the job, um, we have looked at uh, A, trying to get more representation on the West Indies side, bring trophies back to, to Barbados and also to develop our players. So that combination has worked quite well. I think uh, the evidence is there with the representation we have on the West Indies side. And um, when we reviewed the performances of the Barbados team over the years, the one element that we felt we could have improved upon was the preparation. Right. So a lot more emphasis has gone into preparation and hence why it's been so detailed. It's taken us a little while to get where we, where we are now. Um, and a lot of logistics had to be put in place but I must say that the Barbados Cricket Association has really pulled out all the stops and we've got things going just about the way we wanted to. As you would have known we had two trial matches before this one that were played at Kensington. The plan was to have all three at Kensington because we felt it was important for the players to more or less be accustomed to those sort of facilities, that level of, of um, em environment so to speak. But because of the request from the company that's looking after the outfield at Kensington Oval, they asked for three clear weeks to finish their preparation. So we had to shift this final game uh, to the Desmond Haynes Oval. But all in all, we are very satisfied with the way things have gone. Now, you know, Hendy, we, we, we know who is in the team based on the fact that the draft was done a while ago, which was early preparation that you're speaking about. Um, but we're seeing some faces back. Uh, for example, Tino Best, he, he seems to be back bowling pretty fast. Does he have a, a great chance of uh, getting into that team, although he was not originally part of the draft and the, and the, the thoughts of the selectors? Well, just for clarification, the team is not selected. The list that you've been seeing publicised is the contracted players. And this has been on a number of the websites as well, which I think has misled a number 
number of people. So we have 15 contracted players, but the selection of the team is not limited or restricted to the contracted players. So that has to be made very clear. So to go on to answer your second question, Tino Best, like all the other players who are involved in these trial matches and players who are currently playing local cricket are still eligible for selection for the Barbados Pride. Are you are you looking at someone like Afida Edwards who um, has done so well for his county team, uh, picking up a lot of wickets? Does he still have a shot if he comes back and, and, and wants to represent the, the island? Absolutely. To want to do it is one thing. To make himself available is another thing. And then to fit in with all the requirements is a, a, a third aspect of it. So there's no one thing in, per se. Uh, as I said, we, we look at a holistic approach in our preparation and we have to be fair to everybody. And from what we've seen of Fidel Edwards, he, as you know, he was part of our setup yeah. last year. So there's no surprise if I say now that yes, we still have an interest in Fidel Edwards if he's available, if he's interested and he's prepared to commit to the requirements. Now, as you know, he would have played last season for Hampshire as a Colpac player which means that basically he's not making himself available for West Indies. Now that's not only until the end of the season, which was just completed. They've offered him another contract. I'm not sure if he's agreed to the contract and whether he will give up that Colpat status. Now, he also can play for Barbados or any franchise for that matter as an overseas player if he doesn't want to give up his Colpat deal. So all that's in the equation. And in a nutshell, if he's available, we will certainly entertain the thought. That's good, good news. Now, we know the usual suspects, but you've also got some nice young raw talent. Tell me about some of the talent you have. I see there's a, a fast bowler by the name of Young Eiffel. Uh, looks pretty imposing. Yeah, we've got um, about three of those fast bowlers. There's young Trevor Eiffel, who plays for the police side. There's a schoolboy called Shamar Springer from Combermere. He's involved with the West Indies on the 90s. And we have um, a youngster from the BDF called Dario Seal. So there are a few of them up there that have, um, let's say, pop out of the woodwork. And then you have some guys who've been part of the, the, the program, like Jerome Jones, who's played West Indies on the 19s as well. That's all part of their developmental as well. So uh, there have been a few guys who have created a bit of a stir in the trials. And that's, that's always very good. And you talk about the usual suspects. Of course, the guys coming back from West Indies duty would be considered almost automatic to come into the side. So it's really about filling the, one, the few spots that will become available when uh, they obviously return to international duty. All right, finally, Hendy, a, a look at the, the, the fixtures tell you Barbados have uh, the, the luxury of a couple of matches home first, and uh, then they travel to Ghana. Are you happy with how that has turned out fixture-wise? It is useful. I think that is useful if you can start uh, with home matches. And when we looked at the way the, the tournament, the, the results went last year, I think having those early fixtures uh, made a significant difference. So, uh, yes, I believe that the players uh, are very happy to play their first two games at home. I think it gives them a, a sense of where they are in terms of the structure. Uh, all the preparation that's going on here, remember that you still have the five guys coming back for the first two rounds uh, of matches. So the team will probably take shape for those first two games and then it will be significantly different from game three onwards until the first break. All right, wonderful stuff. Hendy Wallace, Chairman of Selectors for the Barbados Pride team, and you're watching Mass United Insurance's line of length. When we come back, we're going to roam around the ground and Andrew Seeley is going to catch up with some very important people here. <laughs> Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance. And welcome back to Massey United Insurance's Dinah Length. And joining us is uh, Hendy Springer. He's the head coach of the Barbados Pride team. Hendy, it's the second year of the pre-PCL. Uh, looking forward to it? Of course. Look, we did very, very well last season. We just missed one step and I'm looking forward to this season. Uh, your thoughts uh, this year, they changed the system a bit and uh, Barbados incorporated two, uh, two franchise players outside of Barbados, uh, Preston McSween and Hayden Walsh. How have they fitted into the Barbados program? Well, well, very, very well. Um, I think they fitted in better than I would have thought they would have. Um, a lot of guys are taking them all over Barbados. They probably know more about Barbados than I do. But the important thing is that they've been exposed to some really high and very intense um, practice and training sessions and they're actually enjoying it. 
In terms of the, this change which was made for 2015-16, your thoughts on it? Are you, are you happy that the, the West Indies Cricket Board made the decision to expand the franchise system as it were? Well, yes, I, I'm very glad, but I think in, at some point in time we have to go one step further where we can out, actually engage some professionals from outside of the West Indies. I mean, some guys who can come with their um, five, ten years first-class experience probably want to form a test cricketers as well. Mm -hmm. The Barbados uh, Pride team starts at home, first two games at home. Is that important? Very, very important because we need to hit the ground running. And when you go overseas, you need to go overseas with, with points because you never know what conditions that you may have to encounter. In terms of your practice, you've had two games at Kensington Oval and now we're here at uh, Desmond Haynes Oval at Carlton. Uh, was it just to get a, dust, a different surface for, for the players to get accustomed to? Well, that as well as the fact that um, Kensington Oval, they're still doing some finishing touches at Kensington Oval to get themselves ready for, for the first class season. And we started preparation from the beginning of August and this incorporated a number of practice sessions um, weekly, obviously with some, a couple of um, personal development presentations. And of course, you know that the guys are still in their club season, so our presentations have been incorporated, all, all of those things. Uh, Barbados has a particularly unique situation, Hendy, in that as many as seven or eight players are with the West Indies team or will continue to be the West Indies team in both Sri Lanka and Australia. Uh, the reserves, have they come to the fore, as it were, in, in the trial matches played so far? Well, yes, they have. If you've looked at the number of guys that have had good performances, um, you talk about Paris, um, Shane Mosey has done really well, Young Barfit from the Barbados Defence Force Sports Program, getting hundreds. And th that is a good sign. That is a very, very good sign because they're actually putting themselves in a competitive you know, um, arena for, for national representation. The Nagico Super 50 takes place once again, smack dab in the middle of the PCL four-day four -day tournament. Uh, your thoughts on this, this juxtapositioning? Well, it, it would be good to have it probably sometime that you wouldn't have to have some serious transition stage. But it has happened that way last season and we've got to make sure that we manage our preparation and our players who qualify for that tournament really, really well. Uh, and Barbados uh, has done well in both the four-day and the one-day. Uh, this year, I believe the Nagico Super 50 being played in two venues in St. Kitts and Trinidad. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, I think we, we're in the zone of Trinidad, uh, in the Trinidad zone. Uh, it's very, very interesting. Um, I think the pitches in St. Kitts would be a lot different from the ones in, in Trinidad. You know, And those guys who are playing in Trinidad are going to make sure that they play really, really good cricket because the, the guys who are coming or whoever qualifies from the St. Kitts leg of it, they become a more form, having experience, a better standard of pitch. Mm -hmm. With me is Kevin Stout, the 50-over captain for the Barbados Pride team. Kevin, coming into this season, you have been in really good form. Tell me, first of all, about your experience that you would have just come back from England. Um, the experience playing in England and playing in the Sussex Premiership League, it was a very, very good experience. Um, knocked about around the Sussex county side, did some practice sessions with those guys and very good experience listening to those first class players play and listening to their experiences and watching the way how they prep, um, prepare for games and practice sessions was very, very interesting and I use the knowledge I've learned from those guys and try to put it into my practice as well. Well, I'm really seeing that coming through because so far your form has been very good, um, helping your team empire and also in the trials. Um, this season is, a re you reckon, a, a make or break for you? You think it's time that Kevin Stout turns the corner, makes the West Indies team with some good performances? Well, of course. Um, every year I, I decide to put all the hard yards in for my practice and preparation. I want to say thanks to the coaches at the BCA and thanks to Teddy Foster who've been working with me throughout the past couple of years. Of course, I see this season as a very important season for Kevin Stout once selected and me playing to the best of my ability. Let's not just focus then on Kevin, let's focus overall on the Barbados team. Um, they, they did quite well in the PCL last year. This year it's again um, 10 rounds, first three games, first two games I think are in Barbados as we looked at the fixtures earlier. How do you see this season, how do you see the first class cricket season uh, helping cricket grow in not only Barbados but generally in the West Indies? Well if you check the past four to five years Barbados first class side have been doing very well. If you're, if you're not winning the competition we're coming in the top three. So that's a very very good sign for Barbados cricket and cricket in the West Indies because it's always said that when Barbados cricket is strong, West Indies cricket is strong once players are representing West Indies as well. Um, I want to say congratulations to the seven guys from the Barbados side who is in the West Indies team as well, which is a very, very good show for the cricket in Barbados. 
Um, going forward, home and away games is very, very good because it extends the first class season and give batters the perfect opportunity to showcase their skills in longer periods of time because when you play six first class games and then that's the end of it, how much can you can you get out in six first class games in um, consideration of playing 10 first class games, which is if you bat twice in every game, that's 20 innings and then you'll be able to judge a player on <clears throat> how well he performs in playing home and away games. Now, generally, do you think the standard of first-class cricket has improved? Um, I mean, it's mean, it's only the second season of the PCL, but do you think the standard is improving throughout the other teams? Well, yeah, of course. You can see a big difference because everyone is being played to play you now and everyone is making a special effort to improve their game and work harder. And you can see guys making um, a very big improvement in their games, all, especially all the teams in, in the Caribbean. We're going to speak to the older Stout now. This is a man who produced a uh, young Kevin, Richard Stout, um, well-known entertainer in Barbados and, of course, uh, avid cricket fan, manager of this uh, wonderful club here at Carlton. Uh, Richard, I want to talk to you about the days gone by of trial matches in Barbados and perhaps throughout the region. Y you look around at the, the ground, there's a, a trial match going on, very few spectators, if any. This could not be the case in the 70s and 80s. Um, your, your thoughts and recollection of how revered trial matches used to be? Well, things have changed tremendously, Barry. You know, when I was a, a young man watching trial games at Kensington Oval, I mean, it was like a test match. And people went there to support their respective clubs and players and families came out to support. But that is gone now, you know. And I think cricket is a spectator sport and you need spectators to come to see, to see cricket. I, I don't know if maybe... The coverage of it is not as excellent as it was before and I think that maybe you need to look at how you can promote it. you're giving more impetus to the trial games to have more people come out because the cricketers you know would want to hear applause you know uh, a fella gets fit a half century in the trial game you hardly hear ripples of applause you know there's no real inspiration and so I think that that's, that's badly missing it never was like, in, like that in the days before. What do you think can be done to revive such interest, seeing how uh, the world has evolved then since the 70s and 80s because things have changed? Well, I think corporate barbers needs to come aboard and, import and realize the importance of, of cricket because cricket has done a lot for, for Caribbean people. And, uh, and that, that's an area that we, we should look at seeing how we can revive it, how we can get people to come back to the games on Saturdays at the clubs and things like that, that club support for the players and, and the clubs is, is, is very much needed. And so if we can get the, the, the corporate barbers to come on board and, and give that encouragement to, to the development of the cricket, I think that would help indeed. Let's talk a little bit about the accessibility of watching cricket on television. <laughs> Again, years gone by, um, you know, it was compulsory that you just turn on your TV um, wherever you are and you were watching the West Indies playing overseas series. Now they are playing an overseas series now in Sri Lanka. Um, the coverage is, is exclusive on other networks. Has the exclusivity of cricket on certain networks and certain channels stop people from also being interested? I think, uh, you know, the, there's a modern, modern technology age we're living in. I think it's good and it's bad. Uh, I, you know, I remember growing up and seeing people walking through Bridgetown with radios to their ears, you know, listening to cricket, trying to get a, a score. Uh, you know, you can turn on the radio and hear it anytime. I think it's, 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 it's terrible that we don't have that kind of coverage anymore. It is, it's robbing people of, of really understanding understanding more about cricket and the, and the younger people you know are robbed of the opportunity you know because you the more you hear something uh, the better you understand it and and even from a female perspective you know the the, the women of our, of our society now is robbed of, of understanding more because it, they, they're not getting that coverage live on radio or on on, on television all right, always great to hear from Richard Stout, a respected uh, cricket fan, um, of course, manager of the Carlton Cricket Club, and we are with him right here on Mass United Insurance's Line and Length. Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance. 
And welcome back to Massey United Insurance's Line of Life. And with me, Emerson Trotman. Now, he's a man who spent 11 years in South Africa and a whopping 32 in Holland. So he knows all about international cricket. We are talking about South Africa versus India in India. Emerson, your thoughts on what has happened so far and how you think the series will go? Well, I think the series will be won by India. India plays very well at home. South Africa is a very good side, will be very competitive, but a lot will rely on De Villiers, who is a fantastic player, one of the best players in the world. But India's got some very, very good players who can move from one 50 over into 20 over in a space of no time. And they're good 20 over players as well, so they know to step at that kind of get cricket. So far, South Africa have done pretty well, but I think it's, it's usual for South Africa to start pretty well. But it's the consistency that they seem to have been lacking because they have some big name players, but they have not been able to put it all together. Well, that has been a South African problem for many, many years now. They start very well, and then when it comes to the, the real crunch, they seem to always um, to crack in the end. So that's why India will always have the edge on them, at, at playing in India as well. We have seen the emergence of a couple of new players in, in South Africa. Uh, Emran Tahir, not a young player, uh, the, perhaps the spinner they've been searching for for the last 10 years, and also the new fast bowler, uh, Rabada. Uh, your thoughts on these two new players especially? Well, Rabada looks very good. He reminds me a lot of Nakini, Natini, Antini, yeah. Antini, for many years, and he's aggressive as, also as well. So he's got, and he's young, and he's got a big, good future ahead of him. And Safari Cricket got very good structure as well, so they would take very good care of him. Tahir uh, has has improved. You know, he started uh, the first couple of seasons, you know, very um, uncertain himself, but he's he's grown into that kind of cricket now, and he's doing very, very well. I, I admire him bowling. Well, that with these two and the future of um, perhaps uh, De Villiers with a couple more years to go, uh, Quinton de Kock, uh, 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 David Miller, uh, are we seeing the transformation moving from the Graham Smith era into a new era of South African cricket? Well, there's a big difference with the Graham Smith era, but um, it takes time. And uh, that's what you need. Miller's young and the Cock is also young as well. And uh, um, those guys, another two, three years time would be all right for South Africa. And they were bringing along some youngsters because South Africa is very good at planning their, their cricket. You said they're very good at planning, but they're not very good at winning major titles. Uh, so far, all the major titles have eluded them. Um, what do you see down the road? Well, I believe it comes down to the road to um, handling the pressure. I mean, um, it seems to get you know, into a lot of pressure problems and overthinking in the end. And that seems to crack them a lot in the end. In terms of India now, Emerson, uh, you've not spent too much time there, but I know you've been there. Uh, we now see the, the almost uh, the near exit of an MS Dhoni and the emergence of a Virat Kohli as the new captain. Uh, your thoughts on the transition that appears to also be taking place in Indian cricket? Well, India also plans very well, but it's the situation here that if you, if you watch it, you can see that, um, there's a little, little tension between the two. And if, the two, the two, if both of them can just reunite, and get even close to, you know, that would be very good for Indian cricket and the youngsters can benefit from that. And as long as the youngsters um, could see that um, there's a little bit of tension between the two, I mean, you can see that quite easily, that will have some effect on the youngsters. So it's up to them as professionals and grown-up men to just bind a bit closer. These are the teams that are in the top half of the ICC rankings at the moment. So you expect competitive once they play together and play well? Yes, yes. I expect them to be you know, world champions again, you know, and uh, as long as they play together, as I said, you know, that will actually improve the youngsters and bring them along nicely and make India cricket even stronger. They're very, very, very good side. I mean, since Tinduka's left, he hardly even missed him, really. You know what I mean? So that shows the strength of South African cricket. I mean, India cricket, sorry. Well, and South African cricket as well. That we, that's what we've been talking about. Yes, as well. Yeah. South Africa cricket, they're the top teams. There's no question about that. They're the two top teams and I love to see them play. I think the whole world love to see them play as well. And both um, countries have got um, a big, big future ahead of them. That's uh, Emerson Trotman. He spent a number of years in South Africa working as a coach, now back in Barbados. And you're watching Massey United Insurance's Line on Line. So there you have it. We look forward to the start of the Professional Cricket League. Of course, the Test Series is ongoing with the West Indies and uh, Sri Lanka, so we won't discuss that just yet. Perhaps we will review that uh, when that two-match series is over. Andrew, we look forward to another uh, wonderful week. We haven't had any controversies that we uh, have that, that, <laughs> spoken that, about that, so well, far. That we've heard about, for sure, but I'm sure next week there will be some in the mix. 
All right. Join us then when we have another edition of Mass United Insurance's Line the Bye-bye for now.